his book, Bible and Pocket, Gun in Hand, Ross Ferris tells a collection of stories, basically, of what life was like on the Western frontier uh, in regards to the Christian faith or Christianity after the Civil War. It was during that time where there wasn't really a, a lot of colleges that would train preachers in this area, or as sometimes we think preaching schools. And so for some churches, if a guy um, wanted to preach, he kind of had to have some kind of validation or proof or, you know, allegedly some religious experience. And then he would appear before some panel or committee of, of, of whatever church it was, and he would tell about his experience on how God had called him to preach. And if the panel or committee um, agreed with it, they would ordinate him to go and to, and to preach. Well, on one particular occasion in this book, he tells about a guy who basically tells this panel or committee that an angel appeared before him at night in his while well, he was in bed and basically has called him to go and to preach. And everything was good and fine, but at the end of his, um, if you want to call testimony, he was denied uh, the ability to preach, and here's why. They said the Bible teaches in Romans chapter 10 and verse 15 that how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. And they said, you have size 13 feet. <laughs> so because you have big feet or you have ugly feet, you don't have beautiful feet, uh, you're disqualified, basically, from, from going into, and preaching to people. Well, here's what, basically, his response was. Being a bit puzzled, Mr. Ferris notes that he remembered that he had seen the vision that had called him at night while in bed, and his feet were hidden under the covers. And thus, he now understood that the messenger angel uh, could, have, could not have seen his feet, basically, at that time, and even though he was disappointed, he now accepted that even in the spirit world, little mix-ups like these basically occur. <laughs> this, this story I find funny, but you know, at the same time, I think it's also sad. I think it's sad because, listen, Romans chapter 10 and verse 15 is not talking about in order to preach the gospel, you have to appear before a committee of people and your feet have to be portrayed in a, some kind of beauty contest in order to get the approval. Because if you don't have beautiful feet, you can't preach. You know, what it's really talking about is the individual who decides to go and to preach the gospel, more than likely, especially in the first century, they're going by foot. There's no cars, there's no uh, airplanes, you understand that? And so uh, when they arrive somewhere, someone who appreciates the truth, th their presence is, is welcoming, basically. And what's my point about all of this? My point is, is I think this shows us perhaps the importance of being a devoted student of the Word of God. You got to remember that the Bible was completed about 2,000 years ago. We're 2,000 years removed from the last book written, okay? And the Bible was written in a different language. It was written in Greek, uh, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, primarily in Hebrew. And, and not only is there a language kind of barrier there, but there was different culture, different times, different circumstances than today. And while I'm not saying that uh, we can't understand the Bible, I am saying because of some of these things, it is very easy for us perhaps to misunderstand the Bible. Jesus did say, for instance, in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, that if you abide or continue in his word, you'll be his disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I, I believe that, and I know you probably do too. Uh, however, uh, there are times where we can read our culture and our circumstances into the Bible, misunderstanding it, just like the somewhat of a crazy example I, I basically just gave you. But let me mention a few things to you briefly about being a student of the Word of God. Number one, we, we need to devote ourselves daily to the study of Scripture, like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11. You know, they had never really encountered, as you go back and you look at these Bereans, as Paul is preaching to them from the Old Testament about Jesus, they'd never really encountered some of these things that Paul was saying about Jesus. They're probably familiar with these Old Testament prophecies there. But they, 
had to go in and investigate to see if these things were true. A mindset like that is kind of the mindset we need. We need to, for instance, uh, in addition to that, learn as we study the scriptures to harmonize scripture with scripture. That's what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 4 when he was tempted by the devil. The devil quoted scripture to try to get Jesus to sin. And Jesus' response in that second temptation in Matthew 4 was to quote scripture to show that the devil was misquoting scripture. So harmonize scripture with scripture because scripture, God's word, does not contradict itself whatsoever. And then furthermore, like the Bereans too, uh, we, we need to always have an open mind. You know, Jesus in John chapter 5, just give you an example uh, told those who had been students of the scriptures for perhaps all their life, and there were some there that were probably experts in Old Testament law. And he told them in John chapter 5, verse 39, he said, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but these are they which testify of me. That's a pretty big deal, what he just said there. You know the Bible in one sense inside and out, but you've missed the very point of them, the very fact that these scriptures where you find justification that you have eternal life, actually they reveal that I'm the Son of God, the very person, in other words, that you've rejected. And in, in other words, you know, it doesn't matter how long we've been studying the Bible, we can still misunderstand Scripture. We still have to allow that possibility, basically. It doesn't matter how much we know or how many degrees we have uh, in regards to the study of the Scriptures. The, the, the truth of the matter is, is there must always be an open mind that maybe what we have been taught or have believed is wrong. Now, that's not to say everything that we believe and know is wrong, but it does say that we can be, and that open mind and that humility actually really contributes to the idea of seeking to know truth. You know, Paul told Timothy, and may we be the same in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, to be diligent to present ourselves before God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, handling aright the word of truth.